I thought what I'd start doing is answering a few different questions that I keep getting around menopause. And one of the ones that comes up quite a lot, and all of, of course, all of you know that when you come to join the group, I generally ask what it is that you're looking for in the group. Hot flushes comes up time and time again. So I thought I would do this particular call all about hot flush, flushes, explaining what it is, why it happens and what you can do about it. So, and if, as I said, if you've got any comments, questions, just pop them into the um, into the group and I will check them and I'll come back, back and answer them. And look, and even if you're watching the recording, please simply leave the, the any questions or comments and I'll come back and answer them afterwards as well. So I'm just going to pull my notes up. Hot flushes. Um, they're also known as vasomotor symptoms or VMS. And sometimes if you hear um, the medical profession will call them VMS. And 50% of, of, well, numbers kind of vary, but we think between about 50% and 70% of women experience some type of hot flush or night sweats during their menopause years. Now, remembering that um, perimenopause stage of life can actually occur um, up to 10 years before your periods actually stop. So women can actually be experiencing hot flushes prior to um, their period stopping. And that's why it's really hard to understand what, what the real numbers are because a lot of women don't really um, don't associate being in menopause when they say in their early 40s, late 30s. Um, so, yes, yeah, so it's, it's hard to get exact numbers on this. But basically they're described as a sudden feeling of heat or warmth that sometimes can come with really heavy sweating. But it kind of starts from the inside out and it's almost like, and I'm, and you, look, I don't need to describe it. You know what a hot flush is like. You've had it. If you've had one, you know, but basically the heating comes from the inside out rather than the outside in. Um, for some women, that means an increase in heart rate. So they might notice that their heart goes faster. Um, they may get a red or flushed face or and that heating can affect the whole body. And for some women, as I mentioned, there can be a lot of sweating that goes on with this. Now, they can actually last for up to 30 minutes or even longer or could just be a few seconds. And everyone's different as to how they uh, um, experience hot flushes. And uh, some women just get them in the daytime, other people get them at night, and that's called night sweats when you um, you know wake up in the middle of the night and all of a sudden you kind of have to throw all the sheets off because you're sweating. And then you, and you do that and then, then, you, then you get cold and you um, have to cover up again. So um, that's what I do. I used to do that a lot, not so much now. Um, but we, there's, we're not 100% sure why we hot flush, but we think there's a few reasons. And one is the hypothalamus, which is a gland which is in our brain, and it's responsible for regulating lots of different body processes, and in particular our body temperature. So when um, our body needs to get warmer, the hypothalamus um, sends more blood out to the outer um, limbs, out to the, um, the skin, to the external parts of the body to warm you up. When you need to cool down, it makes you sweat. So, um, so the hypothalamus kind of controls all this. Now, we think that due to the hormonal changes that are happening, and in particular the drop in estrogen that can occur, well, that does occur as you move through menopause, that this is what causes the hypothalamus to kind of go a little bit um, off kilter. Um, now, when women are in perimenopause, their um, estrogen levels are not necessarily coming down, and I'll do another, another live on this. Sometimes they've actually got too much estrogen, and in perimenopause, hormone levels go up and down um, for quite a few years until you get to um, menopause, menopause being just the time 12 months after your last period, and then there's a gradual drop in estrogen and it continues to come down. But before that, it's going up and down, and that's why hot flushes can be a little bit erratic. Now, as our hormones drop, in the ideal world, 
um, when our ovaries stop producing hormones, our adrenal glands should take over the production of these hormones. And that's the way it, it works when we are in our optimal health and we live in an ideal world. And unfortunately, most men, most women, as they get to this stage of life, um, are very um, exhausted. Their adrenals are in overdrive. So the adrenals can't make enough of the um, estrogen and progesterone to just lift it back up so we're not actually um, having all the symptoms. So firstly, the underlying triggers of hot flushes are, there's a couple of things that trigger hot flushes. And one, as I just mentioned, is that the adrenal glands are unable to support um, this change in reproductive hormones because they are basically, the adrenal glands are trying to keep you alive and keeping your adrenal hormones going because you are so stressed and worn out and there's another big there's another trigger um and that is the state of your liver liver plays a really big role because the liver is where our hormones are metabolized and they're either excreted or they're recirculated in the body and if the liver isn't working as well as it's supposed to be then we can find that we've got we basically we we have an unbalanced hormonal system going on. So stress and liver play two big roles. So what can we do about it? If you are experiencing hot flushes, there are a few things that you can do about it. Some of these are lifestyle changes. Some of these are dietary changes. And when you start to implement these, um, you may start to see that your hot flushes start to come down. So let's start with some really simple things that you can do to start with. Where possible, with your clothing, light, loose clothing um, and layers, layers that you can take on and off. And I happened to be speaking to someone the other day and um, she mentioned, you know, that whilst it was great to take layers off, if she got to the stage where she was, um, they had to take it, um, you know, the top layers off, but then her arms were showing and she was feeling embarrassed about her arms. Now, I've actually, last week's, podcast where I spoke to Anita McLaughlin from Sequins and Sands. We spoke a little bit about this, about um, body shame and embracing who we are. So I highly recommend you have a um, listen to that wise woman's conversation with Anita because we did go into a lot of that. Plus I'm also going to be doing another um, menopause Q&A on um, weight so I'll be talking about that in the upcoming or live. So layers at um, at night. Don't over don't over rug up too much. So don't put too much on. Um, don't get too hot. Don't put too many covers on um, because otherwise you can actually trigger the you know the night sweats to go. So loose cotton nightwear is best. Um, I know for here in Australia we are now coming into winter, so it's a little bit cool. I like to rug up. Um, but um, I don't have too many night sweats. So if I was having night sweats, I would probably not be rugging up quite as much. Um, flushing and night sweats often happen after more stressful and busy days. So try to level out your energy so that you're not overdoing it. For me personally, I know that um, when I do a day which is a, a lot of walking, so um, I've done a couple of really big walks, you know, 30 kilometres in one day, and I know after that that I will, and, you know, most of my flushes are under control, but I know that I will flush because that is something, it's actually, whilst I enjoy it, it's a real strain on my body, so it's a bit of a stress on my body to walk 30 kilometres in one day. But you will know that there are things that um, are where you're over overtaxing yourself, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit in a minute about what you, you know, how you can kind of monitor that. Um, some women carry a small fan with them so they can just fan themselves and, um, you know, just cool themselves down. And don't be embarrassed. I think part of the issue is that women are feeling very embarrassed and they don't want to tell people that um, they're having a hot flush. This is nothing to be ashamed of. Coming through menopause is a natural stage of life and I really want to open the conversation so that women don't have to feel ashamed, embarrassed about what is going on. So if you need to have a small fan with you, have a small fan, use it to cool yourself down. I'm going to give you a few more 
um, tips in a minute that will hopefully stop them so you don't need the fan. But at the moment, that might be what you need to do. Now, I highly recommend that you keep a hot flush diary. And you might wonder what that is. It's like just keeping a diary of when you get a hot flush, what is it that you've been eating before? What have you been drinking before? What what your what you know what has been happening? Have you been stressed? So start to actually start to see if you can work out what your triggers are, because everyone's trigger will be different. But keeping a bit of a diary, you might start to find that you you know able to work a few things out. As I said, I know that when I um, do a lot of physical exercises, I will um, tend to go into hot flashes. I also know that. Um, when things are uh, quite stressful for me. So when we first went into this, um, you know, the lockdown for um, the COVID-19 and there was a lot of stuff going on and my head was kind of going crazy and all of that, I actually started to get some hot flushing back because that was a stressful situation. And once I brought my mind under control and was able to bring my stress back down, um, then the flushes went again. And I invite you to reframe hot flushes as something being bad. And actually, some women call it a power surge. So it, it's our body showing how much power we've got. We've got this power to, to you know, release into the world. And as we could get more and more of this power, that we are stepping into the next stage of our lives, our life, our wise women stage. So start to flip the meaning and see it as something positive. It's actually a sign that your body is asking you to look after yourself. So when if you start to notice when you are triggered, when your hot flushes are tri triggered, what is your body trying to tell you? And it's always asking you to do a little bit of self-care so you can reduce um, the incident of these hot flushes and bring that stress down. Now, regular exercise will also help relieve both the emotional and physical tension but obviously as I said be very careful about not over exercising um, but just a half hour walk out in nature can make a big difference or just doing something that you really enjoy it might just be having a bit of a dance be careful about not um, walking or exercising in really really hot um, weather and the hot sun because that can um, also trigger a hot flush Meditation and breathing also help. So breathing techniques can actually help when you're actually noticing, when you feel that the heat come up, if you can actually stop and take some big, deep breaths down into your belly and just breathe in and slowly breathe out and do that a couple of times, you may actually be able to stop that flush where it is because this is just a reaction. It's just your um, your sympathetic nervous system all of a sudden thinking that something's out of balance. So the hypothalamus has sent out a message saying this is out of balance and it, the nervous system is just reacting. So if you can kind of tell the nervous system that everything's okay and the easiest way to do that is through breathing, breathing techniques, which is just slowing your breathing down and most importantly the slow, long breath out starts to turn the stress response off. So try your breathing and if you do, it, can do some meditation every single day, once again, that slows the mind down. So let's talk about a few herbs that you might be able to use. Now, please um, either contact me um, or see a naturopath and herbalist um, if you want a specific herb mix which will be created for your particular situation or have a chat to me and I'll talk to you about the best herbs for you. But common herbs that you'll find in many of the over-the-counter remedies are sage, um, zizivus, motherwort, black cohosh and red clover. So they're quite often, that's a, a mix that are used quite often together. Um, some women have an, a bit of an issue with black cohosh, particularly if you've had breast cancer, which is an estrogenic type of breast cancer, you'll recommend not to have black cohosh. There are other herbs, though, that you can use. Uh, a really simple home herb re recipe is if you grow sage, um, is to take half a dozen sage leaves and chop them up, soak them overnight in lemon juice and in the morning straight, strain it and drink the juice. Or you can make a tea out of it. So you can just make a sage tea. Start doing that, but be very careful. Don't you, We don't want you to be on sage long term. Um, sometimes it, it'll generally, sage will normally work within a week to 10 days and it'll reduce your flushing and sweets. If after two weeks it's not working, please 
either contact me or see a naturopath or herbalist. We just have to be very careful that you don't stay on sage for too long without being under the um, instruction of a qualified practitioner because sage actually dries up all body fluids. And we don't, even though it may stop your sweating and it may stop your hot flushing, we also don't want you to stop your natural sweating and, you know, the, um, the water within your mouth and all of that. So just need to be careful that you're not on that for too long without supervision. Now, a naturopath may put you on it for a little bit longer, but please um, be very careful of self-prescribing that for yourself. Now, diet. Some of the things we can do with diet. Avoid the really, really spicy foods. So the hot chilies and all the hot foods, avoid them because they are automatically heating your body up and we don't want to put it, make it even hotter. Avoid very hot drinks or foods. So once again, there we don't want to heat your body up if it's already hot. And so for some women, um, they, they will find at this time of life that they're actually just naturally hotter than they were before. Even without a hot flush, their body is naturally hotter. So we don't want to heat it up with putting too much hot stuff into the body. Now, you're not going to like this one. Sorry. But if you are a coffee drinker, start to reduce coffee. Uh, coffee is a stimulant to the adrenal glands, plus also it is a hot drink. Ideally, um, drop it out completely to start with if you can. But if you're used to drinking coffee regularly, you will, will have to reduce it. But coffee can actually be a trigger for a hot flush because it stimulates the adrenal glands. Um, so, yeah, I know that's that's probably some bad news in the next next point that I'm going to make is going to be even more bad news. So avoid coffee. Um, having small amounts of green tea because it does have caffeine in it may be okay. You're just going to have to see how that goes for you. I don't. I drink green tea. Doesn't court trigger hot flushes with me. But having said that, I've addressed a lot of the stress that I've, I've had in my life. Um, and I, there's a lot of things that I no longer do um, that was causing hot flushes, um, in, in particular this next one we're going to talk about, um, alcohol. You need to reduce, eliminate alcohol. And it doesn't have to be forever, but particularly if you're having night sweats. And the thing is, I've spoken, and I actually was speaking to someone the other day, they know that drinking at night triggers them to have night sweats. Now, they, they've, they've actually seen the um, correlation between the two, but they still choose that they're going to drink alcohol a couple of nights a week. That's okay, and you can do that, but know that alcohol is a big trigger for hot flushes. So if you want to get rid of hot flushes and, and night sweats in particular, alcohol is generally the trigger because of the, the load it's putting on your liver and you'll you, – Get a bit of an idea that it is also alcohol is if you're waking with hot sweats between 1 a.m. and 3 a.m. Now, that's liver time. So if your liver isn't processing properly, the waking between 1 a.m. and 3 a.m. is a really good sign that there's something going on with your liver. So, um, yeah, I know this isn't really good news. But, look, it's not forever. Um, and if we can just bring it down enough that you, that you can actually stop the hot flushes, and get them under control, then you may be able to find that having alcohol um, as a celebration with friends is not an issue and it doesn't um, trigger it. Or you might also, if it does trigger it, you're actually able to say, well, okay, I know the consequences of me drinking this is that I, tonight I'm going to have night sweats and you're happy to have that, um, that consequence because it, you're enjoying the alcohol. So coffee and alcohol really two big um, triggers for um, hot sweats, uh, hot flushes, night sweats. Keep really well hydrated. So make sure you are drinking enough fluids. Um, so because we do, do need to keep, that, that keeps the body cooler. Um, now, there are some foods which are high in what we call phytoestrogens. So these are plant-based estrogens. So things like organic tofu, tempeh, um, flax seeds, garlic, chickpeas, pumpkin kernels, green or mung beans. If you want to um, check out my blog and my podcast, I, I've done one on seed cycling, plus I've also put it um, in the Thriving Menopause group. There's a big um, 
diagram as well as all the instructions and it's also on my um, Angela Council Facebook page. So seed cycling will also help because it helps to rebalance up those hormones. Now there are a couple of essential oils that will help as well um, and in particular clary sage, peppermint and lavender all as a blend together. Now you can put them together and in a spray and if you feel a, a, a hot flush coming on you can just spray around your face and around your neck and that may reduce it. Um, if you're noticing you're stressed, you same thing, you put the three um, essential oils, clary, sage, peppermint and lavender together, put them into a roller with some um, coca, fractionated coconut oil or almond oil or um, your jojoba oil. And if you're noticing that um, things are stressing you out, you can just roll it on your hands and breathe it in and take some big, deep breaths. And just slow breaths out and that will help to reduce your stress uh, or you can add all of those to a, a bath with some epsom salt so epsom salt's a great source of magnesium which will help to reduce your stress put the um the oils in it now having a, a hot a hotter bath before you go to bed will actually help you sleep better and you would wonder if that's a bit of a contradiction but when you're in the bath, it does actually naturally raise your body temperature. And as you get out, it lowers your body temperature. So as your body temperature is lower and then you go to bed, you will actually go to sleep um, easier because it actually helps to increase melatonin, which is your sleep hormone. So having a bath before bed just to relax um, is really great. And you can throw those um, those essential oils in as well. Now, there are a couple of nutritional um supplements which will both support the adrenal glands and help to reduce hot flushes, and that is some of your vitamin B. So you've got B5, B6, B3, um, and also vitamin C and vitamin E, all really great vitamins. So basically a really good quality multivitamin will help you um, just to regulate those hormones and reduce support the adrenals and reduce the hot flushes. Also, evening primrose oil works well for some women as well. So if you can, um, if you might try that as well. So there's a few different things there. So I have that I've gone through and that's a bit of an overview of everything that uh, or some of the things that you can be doing to reduce hot flushes. And if you want to know a little bit more, um, on the 22nd of June, um, the, the next round of the Embrace program will keep with kicking off. Now, this is a 12-week program, and in that program, um, we'll be dealing with um, the stress, what's stressing you, what's stressing you in particular. We'll be looking at your diet. Is there anything we need to um, change to actually help you not only reduce um hot flushes but lose weight if you want to or just simply feel great as you move into the next stage of life we're also looking as i said stress diet we'll be looking at exercise we're looking at lifestyle in i will be sharing with you a uh, lots of different tools that you can use to really enhance your health and to create whatever it is that you want for the next stage of your life. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about the Embrace program, um, I am just finishing up the uh, information page and I'll put that out and I'll put that in the group later on today. But if you want to know more, if you're interested in really, you know, taking three months to really focus on you and what's best for your body, for you, for everything that you do, let me know and I will share all of the information. The idea of this program really is to give you information, give you tools and to give you support because you don't need to go through this on your own. There, there are so many women who are going through this stage of life and so many of them think that they've got no one around who understands. I understand, many other women understand and that's why I've created the Embrace program to provide you with the support and understanding that you're looking for. So that's it from me today. Hopefully there's lots of great information there for you that will help you with um, managing your hot flushes, maybe even completely getting rid of your hot flushes. If you've got any questions about hot flushes or if you've got any questions about anything else to do with menopause, please post them in um, underneath this video and I will 
come back, I'll share and I'll do more of these videos for you so that you can start to make those changes so you start to look and feel great. So that's it from me today. From my heart to yours, infinite love and gratitude. Bye for now.